Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're gonna be looking at on-chain analysis as well as the theoretical path to 100K Bitcoin. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Let's go for 100,000 subscribers. Give the video a thumbs up and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the first chart we're showing just simply shows the hash rate. So this is the hash rate uh, of Bitcoin back since all the way back to 2010, 2009, in fact, earlier than 2010, um, all the way back to the beginning. And the interesting thing about it is, of course, it shows periods of rapid moves up in terms of the hash rate. Note that the y-axis is terahashes per second. So you have to keep that in mind. It's not just hashes per second, it's terahashes per second. And so from 2010 to 2012, the hash rate increased approximately six or seven orders of magnitude. And obviously, as we continue on in time, it takes us longer and longer to increase the same amount, because as we continue moving up orders of magnitude, it obviously takes a lot more computational power. Now, one of the things we can do is we can look at our recent price movements and see that, you know, recently, this is the, the, the price of Bitcoin on the, on the secondary y-axis, uh, and it has accelerated. Uh, the price of Bitcoin has, has shot up over the last few months, and the hash rate has, has been steadily rising. Uh, but not a huge rise, but it has been steadily rising. However, this isn't really that surprising considering that we have seen a fairly steady rise of the hash rate over the last several years. If we were to overlay the price, so we have the hash rate in terahashes per second on a logarithmic scale on the primary y-axis, and we have the price of Bitcoin on a logarithmic scale on the secondary y-axis, the red line corresponds to the, to the price, the white line corresponds to the hash rate, you can see that early on the hash rate was moving up as the price moved up and then as after the price peaked the hash rate leveled off and then during the second cycle it took it a little bit longer but it started moving up eventually and then it started to level off after the peak but for the first cycle you can see it was more of an instantaneous thing and then right after the peak it leveled off this one it took a bit longer for the hash rate to to, to be moving up again on a logarithmic scale uh, and then when it leveled off it took it a lot longer to level off uh, than it did the first cycle. The first cycle, it was more or less just uh, complete leveling off immediately. The second one, it, it took it a few months, um, you know, maybe even almost a year or so. And then during this cycle, you can see that it was a very steady, a very steady move up the entire time. You know, it, it leveled off some here uh, for about, you know, a few months or so. And then once the price of Bitcoin started started moving back up, you can see that we started to uh, the hash rate started to started to move up as well, uh, quicker than it was uh, just a year before. Uh, you can see a noticeable uptick in the hash rate, and then we really started uh, continuing our move up for the next several years. However, it didn't have a, a, a you know a, a downturn, a, a significant one, uh, until again after the peak. So it took it a while after the peak, and then it started to level off. And then since then, it's it's mostly been flat. Of course, we know that this, again, is a logarithmic scale. It has been slightly increasing, right? We know it's been slightly increasing. Um, uh, as, we, as we showed here, we can see that it has been, in fact, moving up. But when you compare it to prior increases um, and put this on a, <coughs> on a log scale, it just isn't, uh, it's not clearly, it's not quite as significant as these other moves. So what I would anticipate, again, is the hash rate to continue to move up uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, we might see a noticeable uptick like we did over here at the beginning of 2016. So far, the, the change hasn't been that significant as compared to, say, last year, right? There hasn't been a, a, a huge change. It's more or less just been um, slowly moving up uh, for the last year or so. So now what we want to do is we want to plot the price of Bitcoin versus the hash rate. So this is not plotted against time. This is not temporal analysis, at least on the x-axis, but we do have time color-coded. That way you can see that, you know, generally speaking, the price and the hash rate tend to move up with time. And this obviously makes sense, but this is a nice visualization to show you that as we navigate through the years, uh, not, only, <coughs> not only is the price going up, the hash rate is going up with it, obviously not monotonically, but they are both trending up. And one of the things we can do is draw lines 
across every every order of magnitude in the Bitcoin price. So we have it at 10 cents, we have it at a dollar, $10, $100, $1,000, $10,000, $10, and $100,000. So we have a, a fairly significant spread there of orders of magnitude of the price of Bitcoin. And then what we can do is we can also look at, <coughs> on the x-axis, we can look at the hash rate in terahashes per second and see where was it when we crossed these orders of magnitude or at least hit them? It doesn't mean we needed to sustain them, but when did we first hit them? And so the first one was here at 10 cents and we were around 10 to the minus two terahashes per second. The second one was here, mm -hmm. a, a, another order of magnitude in the price later and we were, we had, you know, moved up somewhat on, on our, on our, uh, in terms of terahashes per second. We had moved up from around 10 to the minus two to approximately 10 to the minus one uh, or so. Um, uh, now, after that, we moved up to $10. And again, the hash rate, you know, the, the hash rate increased by about the same amount in terms of in terms of these orders of magnitude. And then yet again, slightly, slightly shorter here to go from 10 to $100 uh, than these two. But then what's noticeable is the next one to go from $100 to $1,000, it took a noticeable amount of, of hash power to get there. Instead of just moving up, uh, you know, maybe about an order of magnitude, here we ended up moving up two orders of magnitude or so to go from $100 to $1,000. And then from $1,000 to $10,000, we moved up from around 10 to the four, just shy of 10 to the four, let's say five times, times 10 to the three, um, all the way up to, to this point, so around 10 to the 7. So it was getting closer to three orders of magnitude or so, two and a half orders of magnitude. So interestingly enough, here we are. Uh, so the hash rate, <coughs> the hash rate when we got to, um, to uh, the price of a $10,000 Bitcoin was around 10 to the 7 terahashes per, uh, per second. And now we can see that we have continued moving up. The hash rate has continued systematically climbing since then. Um, and now we are above 10 to the eight. Uh, it's hard to know if, if you know, this one will be kind of evenly spaced like this one was, or if it'll be slightly, slightly smaller than the prior orders of magnitude. But we have in fact already moved up over one order of magnitude since we were at $10,000. Uh, and the last time we moved up over two orders of magnitude. So what does that mean? Well, potentially it means that, you know, 10 to the nine, 10 to the 10 terahashes per second or so could theoretically get us to a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. Now, of course, it's not like the hash rate necessarily uh, directly causes the price to change. Um, and it's certainly not the case. However, we do we can look at prior trends to just get an idea i mean it, it does indicate interest in, in in mining obviously miners have to be profitable in order to keep mining um and so as the price of bitcoin goes up then more and more people will flock to it it'll become harder and harder and and the cycle will, will continue and continue and continue so we can look at the hash rate and see where it currently is and as we mentioned so this is 10 to 5 6 7 8 so we're currently at around 10 to the 8, um, <clears throat> which, as we know, is about an order of magnitude already higher than we were at $10,000. So for us to get to, say, 10 to the 9, we, you know, we, we need to go up one more, one more tick here. So we need to go to this level. And to say get to 10 to the 10, if we end up going to 10 to the 10, it would be yet another level. And I just drew this on here because we really don't know exactly how quickly it will go up. I imagine it will go up somewhat in this band. Uh, that I that I spent about two and a half seconds drawing, um, but more or less, the hash rate will likely continue to go up. Uh, in order for us to see a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin, it seems like you know getting to a hash rate a couple orders of magnitude at the very least higher than the one at ten k would likely come hand in hand with a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. Um, now, some other interesting things we can look at are the hash rate in terahashes per second divided by the price. And this is an interesting chart because it shows you we have overlaid uh, the halvings 
Um, but it also shows you where the peaks are fairly well. We know there was a peak at the end of 2013. We know there was a peak at the end of 2017. And these were the areas where it, it came down before bouncing back up. And it might be hard for you to intuitively know what this means. But again, this is the hash rate divided by the price. So if the, if the price is going up really quickly, then we're dividing the hash rate by a larger number. Therefore, it goes down. So that's why it goes down really quickly. And then rebounds because the price can drop 80% or so. Um, but as we showed, the hash rate is, is more or less uh, something that is, is slowly moving up at this point. It does have slight dips, but when, at, when the hash rate, when the price goes up significantly, um, we see a, a dip in the hash rate. We've, we've already seen this to some degree earlier this cycle. We saw it in 2019 where it dipped down um, and we're seeing it again here. It's, it's too hard to know how, how far this will fall before dipping back up or exactly where the cycle peak is. Uh, but certainly I think that in terms of the entire market cycle, I don't think we're anywhere close to it. Um, of course, it doesn't mean that we can't have a correction and then ultimately trend up much later, but I don't think we're anywhere close to the peak of the market cycle just yet. Now, if you look at the price <coughs> divided by the hash rate, it's the same thing except inverted. Uh, some people prefer to see it like this because you kind of see the peak come up, has a peak, and then it continues down and then it comes back up and has a peak and then then back down and then we sort of had a 2019 one obviously the one in 2020 and in 2020 and 2021 is 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 slightly more impressive than the one in 2019 as the price has has continued to push up to 42k fairly quickly um, this one is interesting this shows active addresses divided by the price so in the same manner you can see if the price is going up really quickly compared to the active addresses, then this will fall. Um, and, and that's exactly what you see. You see, it, you see it falling as the price of Bitcoin peaks, and then it continues to go up for a while as the price goes down, but there's still a, a lot of interest in Bitcoin. Um, and then we just continue to repeat the cycle and repeat the cycle. And of course, we, we have not bottomed yet. Uh, it's hard to know if we, will, if we will just continue dropping like this for another year, or if, we'll, or if we'll settle down for a while and then continue it later on, just like we did in 2019. Uh, so this one again just shows the reverse of the inverse, the price divided by the active addresses. I'll just put it on here so you guys can see it. And then finally, an interesting chart shows the price versus the average transaction fee. Uh, so as we can see, unfortunately, the, the, the transaction fee does continue to go up during periods of, of insane price discovery for Bitcoin and, and recently we can see that the that the average transaction fee has in fact been pushing around you know over ten dollars in fact um so in terms of the average transaction fee we haven't even moved past the the highs from from 2017 in fact uh which is which is good um that's a good thing that's a good thing for bitcoin so hopefully this video has been informative we, we try to talk about on-chain analysis from time to time and, and just see where we are in terms of the hash rate as it relates to the price, are we moving up? Price is moving up, hash rate is moving up. Obviously we would like to see the hash rate move up probably another one to two orders of magnitude for us to, to get to a, a, a $100,000 Bitcoin. We'll see what happens. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. And we also do have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com.